So what are cybersecurity standards, also known as information security standards, and it ties into computer security standards and network security standards, but the name is usually something like cybersecurity standards or information security standards. What are they? That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Bruce Brown of the diarmfs.com and elam.org. And let's dive right into this. The best way to understand what cybersecurity standards are is to look at something called security controls. Security controls are a component of cyber information security standards, and they cover things like physical security, procedural security, technical security, legal and regulations, and compliance controls. There's many different frameworks for security, cybersecurity standards. International Information Security Standards or ISO security standards is one that's used internationally of course and then there's the US Federal Government Information Security Standards. The NIST is another example of information security standards or cyber security standards whatever you want to call them and it covers all of these security controls that you see here. These are actually just the families of those controls and the Department of Defense within the United States is actually moving towards the NIST standards as are other federal organizations. Now, the meat of the security controls within the NIST are the security and privacy controls for federal information systems and organizations, also known as the NIST SP 853, revision 4. This document covers all the security controls and here's the family of controls. It covers things like access control, um, awareness and training within your organization, auditing and accountability. So it's not just locking down your system and making sure that your Windows systems or your servers are logging information, but it's also the policy involved with that particular with these particular actions the policies on your security assessments your access control policies as well as your access control technical controls so it's a full range it's the administrative portion is the personnel security portion is the technical portion all of that wraps into this so the, all of these controls are meant to protect your environment and they all sit under the cybersecurity standard of the NIST. This document also covers things like what level, how do you determine what level your information system is. If your information system fails, what happens to the rest of your organization? What is the impact to the rest of your organization? Is it a low impact? If the system goes down, is it just um, people can't access a website or is it the impact so critical that if if this system goes down people can literally die you know there are systems like that so that's going to determine what impact level you have a low impact a moderate impact and a high impact and it's and the way you determine that is again what happens if people can't access my information what happens if this information leaks out what ha happens if my confidentiality breaks, my integrity of my system information breaks, or my availability of my system breaks. If any one of those things fails, what happens to the rest of my organization? That's a very important question. So that this document covers that. And actually all the other, many of the other frameworks cover those three tenets in some sh way, shape, or form. Now let's just deep dive into some of the security controls that are in the NIST to give you an example of what cyber security standards cover. So look at the detail here. So it's not just those original 1718 families of controls, but each one of those breaks into smaller parts. There's planning controls, there's risk, risk controls, there's all types of controls here covering every aspect of your system. But let's go into one of these controls. Let's go to AC4 Information Flow Environment uh, Enforcement. And so it first gives you a description of what it's supposed to cover and then it gives you guidance on how to actually implement 
And there's actually another NIST document called the NIST SP 853A, which tells you how to assess those controls. How secure is your is your information system? How secure is your organization? Is what NIST SP 853A covers. Now here's a look, a brief look at ISO 27001, the International Standard for Information System Management, and um, it goes pretty deep as well into different tenets of information security. And who uses this? Well, international companies use that. Places like Google. So here's Google's page right here, and they're telling you how they use ISO 27001. They're trying to tell, you know, some of their clients and their, their partners that they are secure in accordance with 27001. Here's another standard. Now, this standard is the PCI DSS, which is Payment Card Industry. Um, and they're going to have to be compliant with some portion of the PCI. And this deals with people who are taking payments and information from clients or customers to give out products or services. So you'll see that PayPal is compliant with this. Facebook is compliant with this. Different federal organizations in other countries, international organizations who take credit cards are compliant with this. And the things that it covers is the point of sale devices, the merchant, and then the back end of their systems that take the credit cards and it deals with things like how long are they going to keep the client the customer information where is it going to be stored is it going to be stored separate from the point of sale device is it secure how much information are they going to keep how are they going to protect that information once they do keep it and as you can see since Google does actually take credit card information online. They do have a merchant accounts. Um, they have to be compliant with PCI, and they're telling you here's how we are compliant with this particular standard. And this goes the same for Facebook and PayPal and Target and Walmart or any other very large chain has to be compliant with this. And that and it's not just in the United States, but it's all over the world. Very important standard. Now here's another one. This one is called HIPAA or the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. That's where this particular standard comes from. It came from an actual law in the US. I don't think that other countries follow this one. They have their own variant of it because this comes directly from the United States. But it covers things like patient records. Who can access your patient records? Did the patient give authorization to other people to access those records and you know that's very personal information because what if the patient is terminal what if that patient has AIDS and it might affect their job what if that patient uh, doesn't want parts of their family to know that they have some sort of an, an illness uh, and they the hospitals take this very seriously and in the US clinics and hospitals and any kind of health organization that's dealing with patients has to follow HIPAA Health information privacy is the main focus of HIPAA. But it does have some variant of security controls that you have to have for patient protect, mainly dealing with protection of patient data and patient data sitting on information systems. There's a couple of standards for financial institutions, and one is called Sarbanes Oxley or SOX you might hear it called. And it's uh, coming from the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002 and it's mandatory for certain financial institutions that are dealing in securities. I know it's a really big deal in places that deal with the stock market and um, securities organizations that that are, are publicly traded um, are they're really big on this one. I think some banks have to be compliant with Sarbanes-Oxley. To give you an example of the types of controls that they have is um, making sure that uh, anybody who accessed critical systems that have financial information of clients, uh, it, it's tracking everyone who got on or off the system. And um, here's another standard called SAS 70. 
And this is also dealing with financial controls. Financial institutions mainly do this, but there are recently some other organizations that use it as well. If you're getting into this career field of uh, cybersecurity, standards, standardization, information security, engineering, things like that, you really have to know these standards. And the more you know these standards, really, the better uh, you'll be in your job and the more money you could possibly make. In addition to that, you need to be certified. Here's one certification that across the board is used by many of the information security professionals who do this type of work. And this is called the CISSP or the Certified Information System Security Professional from ISC2.org if you want to check it out. It's one of the best certifications. Now there's other certifications out there and I'll show you another one here. Another one's called the CISA. That one's used mostly by financial institutions. CISSP is used a lot by federal organization. There's another one called the CASP, which is used a lot by uh, also by federal organizations uh, and some private organizations. But CISSP covers so much ground. And these are the, the domains that you'll see here. Another one's called the CAP, and it focuses mainly on the NIST. So if you have the CAP, people are going to know that you know the NIST standards that we showed in the beginning of this video. And it's also very good if you're trying to get a job in this, in this field of standardization, cybersecurity or information security standards uh, is what we're talking about here. And that's pretty much it. We'll talk a little bit more in depth on some of these controls where we dive into some of the, the individual things that uh, you should know about some of these standards.